I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 16th of January, 2023. It is Monday morning. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua and welcome to the show. Today we're doing the combined topic and day because it's Monday and like it's a work day and like I've got nothing interesting going on. I have tons of these uploads and stuff to do because of all the work we did over the weekend. Specifically yesterday, I spent the whole day, as you know, you probably watch the show, filming in the old house that we had in Labo Rio. And what we have for you today, this is my hook, so you gotta stay and watch, is that uh, we showed yesterday the side that we lived on um, for the whole year, the, the house. And then we also had these student apartments on the other side, which obviously most of my viewers are not gonna be interested in specifically, but I think looking at the pricing and what is offered and how people live as students is really interesting and so this is going to be an entire different look at housing in the same area of leon nicaragua uh so so stay tuned that's coming right up tomorrow uh we're going to be heading to the border paul dominica and i uh we are driving down to uh pinas blancas which is the border crossing with costa rica and we're going we've been told that some people have recently had success doing what's known as the in and out border run meaning you you tell them i'm just coming right back in you walk over the border and walk right back in now of course you have to enter right some people are like do you just have to leave nicaragua no that's not how it works nicaragua needs you to have entered costa rica and because that's what you have to be stamped right you have to get stamped out of nicaragua you have to be stamped into costa rica you have to be stamped out of costa rica and then Nicaragua will stamp you back in. That's why we can't use the Honduran border. They don't do all those stamps in either direction. At least they don't have to because it's a stampless border. It's a soft border, single visa. But with Costa Rica, it's an entire new visa. And it is not the exiting of Nicaragua that resets it. It's the entering of Costa Rica. Uh, the same thing. If you were to take a cruise from Nicaragua, go out in the ocean and come back to Nicaragua, that doesn't reset your visa, right? So just like going at you, a rowboat going in international waters does not give you another 90 days doesn't work that way. So that's that's why you have to go all the way into Costa Rica, which is a bit of a pain because you have to deal with all the going out and in and out and in. It's a lot of steps. And that's one of the reasons that people find it annoying, but it's really not that bad. And we're going to go through all that tomorrow. No, will he be able to do that or not? We're going to find out because we've heard that some people have had luck with it recently. We also know that there are times where they don't allow that. The official policy is 72 hours out. So we always assume that when you leave the border, you're going to go to Liberia, you're going to go to San Jose, do something, go to the Nicoya Peninsula, go to the mountains, enjoy yourself, but you're going to have to take a three-day weekend and then come back. But we do know some people have gotten lucky. We're gonna see if Paul does. So this is an experiment tomorrow. We are also driving to the border in our own car, not over it, just to it. So, um, and I'm gonna have a lot of details about that tomorrow. So, so make sure you're watching tomorrow's show for that. Other than that, um, let's get right down to it. I don't have any news for the day, uh, just, that, just that we're really busy and have to be in bed early because we got to do that. We're leaving at like four o'clock in the morning. So there's not going to be a lot of like doing stuff today. Like that's just not a thing. Just a lot of work to be able to take the day off tomorrow because um, I'll be out of the office and Dominica's coming with us because otherwise I would just drive Paul to the border myself. But Dominica's coming with us because today she spent a bunch of time talking to Teco. They're supposed to be getting us our new fiber internet here for the house that I'm in now. Uh, we have internet, but we want to get Teco as well, right? We want to upgrade to it. And uh, they gave us this huge list of things we need to do. We've been running around like crazy, putting together all of this. They want so much paperwork and, and like uh, uh, IDs, all really intensive stuff for getting internet that we didn't need with other providers. And they need us to go to Managua to sign paperwork. So it's been about a week of trying to arrange this and to make it happen, Dominica is going to Managua. So we're driving to Pinas Blancas, waiting for Paul, find out if he can come back. If he can come back, then he's coming with us. If not, I'm driving Dominica to Managua where we're gonna to go to the Teco offices, hopefully sign all the papers, get that done and get that order moving so we can get that installed. It has been crazy. We had to go through so much work just to get to this step where they'd let us drive to Managua to sign the paperwork. I tell you, so all day Dominic is like, okay, do we have everything we need? Is, there, is everything good? Are we in place? Do you have, so should be already, she has a lot of stuff ready for tomorrow. All right, so that was, that was our Monday. I'm gonna now zip back in time because I recorded the tour yesterday, hence why I was able to promise you that I was able to do it. Uh, we're gonna take you through uh, the uh, student apartments in Labo Rio. Off we go. All right, yesterday we did a walkthrough of our house in Labo Rio that we've had for the last year. I'm gonna show this over here. We moved into this on January 23rd of 2022 and uh, have not been living here uh, since December, but we have kept the house. Now, at some point, Fairly early on in living here, we decided that we desperately needed more space. 
and it was not working living just over there and so we added this space now this is uh designed as a four unit student apartment building now those who watch the show will instantly recognize that this is the location where i did so many of my recordings in this beautiful courtyard with this bitter orange tree right here that means it produces bitter oranges the tree is not an orange tree that has become bitter uh, I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a swirl around so you can really see this big beautiful courtyard and you'll see all the different angles from which I have been filming so much over the past year or so or less actually a little bit less than a year and you can see all these different spaces and you can put them together I filmed so much of this we don't have to show much I just want to be able to do this to kind of put it all together so you can kind of see and this is all open air this is just a big courtyard and this is about half of the physical space. And then you can see, we're going to step forward out of the sun, that this is a hallway. So this window went to Paul's bedroom, and this went to my office. And these front two rooms, we installed big split unit air conditioning. We actually had this power unit installed. And this is four student apartments. They're all identical, or essentially identical. We're going to pop in here. So this is unit two was mine. So we took all of these. So we got a big discount because we got it all and you can see the the internet was run over from the other side I had this window so my view was onto the courtyard which once in a while you guys got to see sometimes i would use this in open air sometimes i would turn on the air conditioning but this is uh when we first moved in here there were students living here uh, but so i put my desk right here is my main desk that's where i sat facing the window and then over here was a second table this is where all my my second computer and all my um camera equipment was over there and then we have this little bathroom, very, very tiny, very hard to use, and a small shower. The shower was actually completely adequate, um, but the bathroom, the space between the toilet and the wall, not adequate. And then there's an additional window up there. And of course, this is, you, a lot of you will recognize that there was a curtain here when I had that pulled. That was because there was a bathroom behind it uh, all of that time. So we're gonna head out into the hallway. You see Paul has the same window. Then these back ones, had a window on the side and another little window on the side. So there's unit three and then four is identical. And I opened up unit four so we can pop in and show you that it's the same thing. Again, views onto the hallway, definitely the less desirable units. These we did not install split units, same bathroom again. I'm gonna turn on the light. Now, to the best of my knowledge, these are very, very cheap units. I believe, um, I believe rentals on these are below a hundred dollars a month i'm gonna find out the actual numbers for everyone so that you know and can um you know use this as part of your estimates for things beautiful tile work down here by the way this is a really nice courtyard i feel like if uh if you're gonna live here for a while you could really do a lot to, to spiffy this place up and make it into something painting this wall painting this maybe taking down the roofs and uh, making it a bit fancy, putting in some tile work. You could do some interesting things with it if you wanted to have the whole space. But this was, um, for us, we had two guest bedrooms in the back, the office and Paul's bedroom here. And then with our the large house next door that you should have seen on the video yesterday, if you haven't, go watch that. Um, it was really a great space. It was fantastic. It, it, we ha were able to uh, spread out, store things, have a place for me to work that was separate. I was able to lock this front door. People wouldn't come bother us because it doesn't look like a house. Um, and then, th but the thing that was terrible is every time I had to get just a drink of water, I had to run next door and back. That was extremely inconvenient. We did not like that, but otherwise, Otherwise, it was a fantastic year in the house and uh, it worked out really well with sev seven bedrooms, six baths, and, and all that space. We had storage and space to put in our furniture and sprawl out. So it worked very well and quite affordably and right in the middle of the city, it was great. So this, I just wanted to show, this is student apartments. So not something that expats would normally be looking at at all, but it is a point of interest that these exist. And a lot of people live this way because this is a university town. So student apartments are very popular and they need to be really small. You'll notice there's no kitchens in them. What normally happens, they took this out because we were here, but right over here, they would have an outdoor kitchen that the four units would share and they would just come outside and cook. But that's one of the reasons why there's a Fratanga across the street is the students who lived here would simply walk across the street and for less than $2, they would get dinner. Uh, so that made it so affordable to do that, that that was a common thing that they would do rather than cooking for themselves. But they could cook for themselves right there. Uh, they could have mini fridges in these units. And typically for that price, under $100, 
their power is included, their television is included, their internet is included. So it, it, it's a pretty good deal. Like you live and then you have this little outdoor kitchen thing. So it's, it's quite limited and it's meant for one person who's probably going home every couple weeks to see their family or whatever, uh, but living out of town to be able to go to university. So these are really just quiet places to sleep and study, uh, but very, very effective and, and pretty comparable to a lot of dorm living, for example, in the United States. So hope you enjoyed this little tour of the little student apartments that we used for the last year here in La Barrio, Leon, Nicaragua. And uh, yeah, let's head on to the day. All right, I hope you enjoyed past Scott's tour of the apartments at La Barrio. It really was incredibly handy having those. It made all the difference for us. It took us from a three bedroom, two bath to a seven bedroom, six bath combination. And the common spaces in the main house were so large that we really had no problem that there was such a small amount in the other. But actually, I didn't mention the student side when we finally got a car, which for those who watch the show, you know, it was towards the end of our time here. We didn't have the car for most of the time that we lived here. Um, that's where we parked it. And I don't know if you could see from the outside view, but getting in and out is really hard. And that's a really busy street. You can't always tell because obviously I'm filming when there's not so many cars. It's busy, really, really busy. And that makes it difficult uh, to get a car out. And you have to like back out blind. There's always traffic. There's always cars parked next to the house. It's complex. So uh, getting away from that was a big deal. But that side is where we had that parking. And that was really nice. So we really appreciated the availability of that parking over there. It made, um, uh, it made us able to keep the motorcycle on the one side and the car on the other. And uh, when the car wasn't there, I did a lot of filming in that space. So it's kind of my outdoor studio, kind of like this is now. And uh, I figured out a lot of like specific places I could stand and work pretty well. Um, so I found it pretty useful. And because it was completely enclosed, it wasn't too bad, but it was loud because of the church, because of the school, because of the fireworks, because uh, of the traffic. That was a big negative. Um, but the the light because of the tree and some of the background like actually worked pretty well. There was enough space for me to set up cameras and things in a lot of different configurations. I could put out a table um, and I could leave things set up for the most part because it was it was completely enclosed, like it's very secure. Uh, so that that was great. And I really found that useful. I think here, as we get used to a couple different camera setups and find really good locations and different time of day, things are gonna be way better. Um, but it's gonna take a little bit before we get all the patterns down of exactly where it's super awesome. Uh, so we're gonna be experimenting with that hopefully next week, not this week. I mean, this week I know is gonna be busy. The whole, the whole trip tomorrow means that I'm gonna be playing catch up all week on everything. Um, but uh, maybe the week after this week, uh, I'm gonna get to a point where I can start setting up the tripod and trying some neat filming here around the property because I think we're gonna find some stuff that's really interesting. We have so much longer space to work with. We can use much longer lenses, uh, just do more interesting things and shake it up some, um, which I think will be nice. And it's certainly more interesting for me getting to play with uh, different cameras, different setups, different lenses. That's part of the fun and I hate, um, I mean, I love my GoPros and I love that I have two of them now and that makes life a lot easier. Uh, but I think that it'll be a lot more fun for me getting to work with a lot of different camera configurations to do, do the show for you. All right, so today we're calling it a day early um, because uh, I got to get up at about, th I'm going to get up a little bit before four tomorrow morning so I can get ready to get on the road and drive all day. And uh, I hope you guys uh, tune in tomorrow, find out all about what it's like heading to Pinas Blancas. And I hope that the uh, information over the last few days of showing houses and stuff has been interesting. And we have more houses coming up, um, not I think tomorrow, but in, a, in just a few days, we've got at least one more house to show you uh, that completely different than uh, these, well actually apartment, a uh, house that's converted into apartments, I think you're gonna be really excited when I do a tour of Casa Mango in El Centro, Leon. Very, very different. All right, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, you can buy me a coffee, I'll put that link. You can also go watch more episodes. Just watch the shorts, watch the long, leave them going in the background, watch them on your phone. Any different thing, any extra thing you can do uh, shows up to Google and they love it. So. Please do that if you can, and uh, remember to share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and uh, get down in the comments below. And your, what do you want to know about the houses? I did yesterday to yes, just yesterday. I showed the number uh, for one of the houses. If anybody needs information about that, let me know. There is a, an episode where I walk through it, and. Um, yeah, I hope this has all been extremely interesting. I will see all of you from Pinas Blancas at the Costa Rican border tomorrow.